Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Detroit style pizza. That's right, the next time you hear two people arguing about whether Chicago or New York pizza is the best style, you should probably interrupt them and tell them they're both wrong. America's best pizza, in fact, could be Detroit style, which is what I'm going to be attempting to show you how to make in this video. Although, please keep in mind I'm relatively new to the Detroit pizza party, but I think I have a pretty good grasp on the key elements. And of course, once this goes live, our friends from Detroit can kind of fill in the blanks. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our dough. And as usual, that's going to start with some warm water, as well as a packet of yeast and a teaspoon of sugar. And by the way, if you found that package yeast in the back of the cupboard like I did, and it looks all weird and chunky and you're not sure if it's still good, what we can do is give it a stir and then wait like 15 minutes to see if it foams up, which means it's still good. And if the yeast is still alive, it's going to look something like this. So yes, we have proof of life. And once we've determined our yeast is alive, we can go ahead and add the rest of our classic pizza dough ingredients, which will include some olive oil, as well as some salt, and some bread flour. And yes, of course this will work with all purpose, but bread flour has more gluten and works a little better for this pizza crust. And once that's all in there, we'll go ahead and knead this with our dough hook. Of course, scraping down the sides once or twice, if you have to. I didn't film that part. But anyway, we'll go ahead and knead that for a few minutes, or for however long it takes to form a very smooth, very soft, fairly elastic, fairly sticky dough. And if everything goes according to plan, it should look something like this. So that was looking and feeling just about perfect. And once that's set, we can move on to our very specific, very specialized Detroit pizza pan, which in case you're keeping score at home is 10 by 14 inches. And what we're gonna do is drizzle in some olive oil and then spread it around with our fingers, not just to distribute it, but also because we want our fingers covered with olive oil when we transfer our dough in. And the reason is we're actually gonna let our dough rise right in the pan, we're gonna bake it. So we'll go ahead and place our dough in the center and then using our freshly olive oiled fingers, we will kind of pull and stretch that dough out into a rough rectangular shape. All right, just get it close. And we absolutely do not have to go all the way to the edges. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, you can still do this without this pan. And I'll give you two great alternatives in the blog post. But if you do end up liking this, you will probably want to order one of these since it really does such a magnificent job. And by the way, it's just a great all-purpose roasting pan. But anyway, like I said, we'll go ahead and stretch our dough out a little bit and then simply cover that and let it sit for about an hour to an hour and a half or until it doubles in size. And while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and talk pizza sauce. And apparently what turns a regular pizza sauce into a Detroit pizza sauce is not the tomato sauce or the traditional dry oregano and chili flakes. It's actually the addition of garlic powder or I guess granulated garlic. And my sources in Detroit tell me this is one of the major things that gives the pizza its signature flavor. So even if you're using fresh garlic like I did, we're gonna to wanna to fortify it by stirring in some garlic powder. And then once this is all together, what we'll do is let that simmer on medium low for at least 15 minutes. And yes, of course you can let that simmer longer, but we do wanna let it bubble at least 15 minutes to fully hydrate our oregano and garlic. At which point we'll simply set that aside until needed and move on to the other things we can prep while our dough's rising. And that would be possibly slicing some pepperoni and grating or dicing, in my case, some cheese. And for this, I'm gonna be using a combination of two parts Monterey Jack with one part mild cheddar. And you could grate this if you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and slice it into strips and then cut across into small cubes because it's gonna melt a little more slowly when we put it in the hot oven and give our crust a little head start before it gets soaked with rendered cheese fat. And by the way, the traditional cheese for this pizza is called brick cheese, which is really hard to find, at least in San Francisco. Or if you're in the Midwest, probably not a big deal. But out here, we're forced to simulate the texture and taste of brick cheese by using this combination. And of course, if you are using two different cheeses like I am, once diced, you're going to want to give them a little toss. And obviously, if one of the cubes falls off the cutting board when you're done, you have to eat it for good luck. And then once our sauce is made and our toppings are prepped, we'll go back and check our dough, which as you can see is now doubled in size. And once that happens, we'll take our fingertips which we probably want to rub with a little bit of olive oil from the pan. And we're going to perform what they call in Motown, the old deflation rectangulation. All right, so what we're doing simultaneously is basically pressing out all the air while stretching and pushing this into a perfect rectangular shape that goes all the way to the edges of the pan. And because pizza dough, especially ones made with bread flour, are very elastic, it's not a bad idea to sort of stretch it up the sides like a half inch or so, since it will kind of pull back. 
And then what we'll do once our dough has been fully deflated and rectangulated is go ahead and place on whatever toppings we're going to use. In my case, some sliced pepperoni, which as you can probably see, I did not slice myself. And while incredibly delicious, it was unfortunately a little too thin. And I will explain what I mean by that in a little while. And yes, of course, feel free to add whatever toppings you want. I mean, you are after all the Aretha of your Detroit style pizza. So go ahead and add whatever you think will make your pizza more soulful. But no matter what you use, just make sure you put it down first on the dough and then top that with the cheese. So we'll go ahead and scatter our cubes over. And while doing that, one of the most important things to remember is that we have to have cheese anywhere the dough meets the side of the pan. Okay, so as usual, we do want to scatter this over as evenly as possible, but we want to pay particular attention to the edges. Okay, so like I said, wherever we have pizza dough meeting metal, we want to make sure that is totally covered with cheese. Because what happens when this goes in the oven? is that cheese is going to melt and butter fat's going to render out. And basically that's going to fry the edge of our pizza crust, creating the most incredible textured, flavored crustification that maybe you've ever experienced. Which, by the way, is one of the big advantages to this specialized pan. All right, you try this in a regular sheet pan, you might just have an oven fire on your hands. But anyway, once our pizza's been cheesed, we're going to go ahead and ladle over our sauce in three very distinctive strips, because apparently that's how they do it at Buddy's. And besides being pretty and giving us the perfect sauce to cheese to dough ratio, it will also show us where to cut these slices later. So we'll go ahead and apply our sauce as shown, at which point technically this should go in the oven. Okay, from what I'm hearing, Detroit pizzas only have the toppings under the cheese. But since this is a pepperoni pizza after all, and the best part of pepperoni pizza are those crispy caramelized pieces on top, I decided to decorate mine by placing over a few more slices, which is why them being sliced so thin almost was a problem. Okay, when you're using such a hot oven, we really do want to slice that a little thicker. But having said that, it did work out. Barely, but it did. But anyway, once I had those applied, this was finally ready to pop into the center of a very, very hot 500 plus degree oven, or whatever your highest setting is, for 15 minutes or so, until it's somewhere between golden brown and golden black. And be very careful as you pull this out, because your dough is literally going to be frying in olive oil pepperoni grease, and rendered cheese fat. But you'll see in just a few seconds that bubbling will stop, and that fat will disappear somewhere. Nobody quite knows where exactly. And right here you can get a great look at that signature crust, and why we want to make sure we have cheese all along the edge. And then what we'll do is let this cool for just about five minutes or so, before very, very carefully using a spatula to slide it onto our cutting board. And once we've accomplished a successful dismount, we can go ahead and slice this into nine rectangular pieces using our strips of sauce as a guide. And yes, it should sound and be very crispy. And right about here, I realized my pizza was exactly three slices of pepperoni short, since I could have had two on each slice. Oh well, I'll do it that way next time. That is what we refer to in the business as the learning process. But anyway, I went ahead and sliced that up and went in for closer examination. And as you can see here, not only are the edges crusty, but that bottom should be beautifully browned as well. So I was very, very excited to take a bite. And that, my friends, really was to die for. Possibly literally, if you eat this too often. All right, despite being fried and fat and very crispy, that crust was beautifully light and airy, and it had just a wonderful ratio between the sauce and the cheese and the pepperoni. So I just absolutely loved how this came out. And you usually hear this referred to as a type of deep dish pizza, but that is not what it reminded me of. All right, your typical deep dish pizza has a totally different texture than this. Okay, for me, this was much more of a combination of like a really good focaccia and like a charred thin crust pizza that would come out of a really hot wood burning oven. And even though I don't know much about Detroit pizza, I did instinctively know to eat towards the corner. So that is the last part we eat, since it's pretty obvious that's the money bite. But anyway, that's it. My take on Detroit style pizza. I've never actually been to Detroit, but after doing this video, I feel like getting on a plane and flying there so I can thank them personally. And maybe probably pick up a few tips. But in the meantime, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.